Very good. Well, the presentation today, Effective Meetings and Reviews, um, many of the points in it, they're not rocket science. They're more reminders of how meetings should be held to be most effective. I know I've been personally guilty of violating uh, some of the key elements of effective meetings. And generally with the rationale, I'm too busy, I don't have the time. Um, I also pray, paid the price of wasting time and not really accomplishing what I intended for the meeting. So really, no matter where you are in your career, I just hope this presentation is a gentle reminder to, a, to us all. Another meeting. And meetings are an essential part of, of any project. How well they're managed is critical to the, the success of the project. Um, this could be uh, meetings for anything. In, in particular, we're doing it for projects, but many stakeholder and team members see project meeting as an interruption to their real work and a waste of vulnerable, vulnerable um, valuable time. For instance, um, have you ever been in a meeting where you wondered why the people had come together? Maybe you attended with the assumption that the meeting was for the purpose of making a decision about a specific situation. But then after a few minutes into the meeting, you, you, you only wondered what the purpose of the meeting. You didn't have a clue why you were asked to attend. So project meetings uh, vary considerably depending on the organization and the people involved. Unfortunately, they are often regularly scheduled meetings that once had a purpose, but now people tend out of habit or obligation. Or they are ad hoc meetings called as a knee-jerk reaction to some event for which no one is prepared and so nothing's really achieved. Again, the purpose of this presentation is just to erase your awareness and help uh, these things change. We don't want anyone to feel that their time has been wasted. Okay, the purpose of meetings, why? Why are some meetings ineffective? Here are some of the challenges that we have seen with meetings. What do you think some of the cha your challenges are? There was a survey commissioned by the Interactive Meeting Solutions, LLC, and they found that 55% of meetings are dominated by one or two people. 32% of the people feel they could get fired for speaking the truth in a meeting. 39% of the decisions are made once the meeting is over, and 80% of the discussion is about things people already agree on. So some of the challenges that we, we've listed here, and these may be some of the ones you're facing right now, no clear purpose, no agreement on a common goal, no separating the what from the how, personal agendas, uh, participants not speaking or, or providing input, no meeting, uh, no one controlling the meeting process, no tracking decisions. So we want to talk about some of these challenges. The overall purpose of project team meetings is to provide a platform where members can communicate with each other. Fluid communication is key to the successful completion of work projects. Sometimes emailing or placing in, uh, calls um, to individuals just isn't enough to eliminate confusion. Members can also get updates on changes in progress, uh, progress regarding a project. Sometimes getting an update can motivate and inspire team members to work harder to achieve their own specific task. So like, to avoid some of the challenges on the previous slide, only hold a meeting if the reason for the meeting is essential to the project. The goal requires collaborative interaction, the right people can be present, and there is someone strong to manage the meeting process. Other functional purposes of meeting. Well, it's important to communicate why you're having a meeting and explain that purpose to your audience. Your meetings may often cut across multiple objectives, but forcing yourself to clarify the agenda in these three purposes of like informing and bringing people up to speed or seeking to input from the team members or asking approval, that can result in more effective meetings. But do you really need a meeting? That's a question I try to personally ask myself before I schedule a meeting, is can we accomplish our goal without a meeting? Because if you, if you can accomplish your goal, then, then don't have one. 
unnecessary sorry, or less than productive meetings, they're costly and they're ineffective. Unnecessary meetings can even have a worse effect than just wasting the money. There's different types of meetings. Each type requires a different structure and it supports a different number of participants. For instance, if you have a, a status meeting, that has no limit to the number of participants. But a decision-making meeting, it will, you'll produce faster results with a smaller number of participants. So if you want to help your teams have more effective meetings, set the participants' expectations about the meeting by stating in the agenda what's the purpose and the type of meeting, and then staying on track. The three most common focusing techniques are the use of objectives, listing action items, and also putting things into a parking lot. So the typical meeting types that we're talking about are problem solving, decision making, planning, if it's just status reporting and reviews, or even a feedback. The type of meeting is going to determine the approach. Now we'll talk about meeting roles. A key to an effective meeting is having the right person facilitate it. Facilitators have different strengths and they need different skills, again, depending on the type of meeting. But generally, a facilitator should play a neutral role. The facilitator should encourage participants to establish and confirm appropriate meeting objectives, translate the meeting objectives into productive plan, have clear, open, encouraged discussions, ensure the right people are in attendance, explore new ideas, analyze options, set timeline for actions, and communicate the, the meeting results. Then with another role is the participants themselves. They play a major role during the discussion and the decision making. They're expected to interact actively in all the activities if there's brainstorming or decision making because they can create su suggestions and even precede the function of a facilitator, participants broadly determine the whole course of the meeting. So meeting participants should be encouraged to speak up when appropriate, show respect, ask questions, avoid monopolizing, we all hate that, avoid inter uh, interrupting others, keeping comments brief and to the point, not criticizing, not getting angry or defensive, and uh, not taking rejection personally. There's other roles in meetings as well. The recorder is otherwise known as the note taker or the scribe. This person takes a neutral stance, just like a facilitator. The recorder doesn't get involved in the agenda evaluation, the decision making, um, or the interaction among the other team members. The recorder actually helps in wrapping up the meeting uh, properly with gathered notes from the participants' ideas. And the members shouldn't have to worry about whether or not their ideas are left unheard, um, but hope that everything is captured by the recorder. Another project role, or another role of a meeting, is the timekeeper. They keep the meeting on track and make sure the speaker keeps to the allotted time. We've all been in situations where at a meeting someone runs off on a, uh, a tangent, and the timekeeper, it's their responsibility to bring them back. But every role in a particular meeting is regarded as important to the success of the meeting. So in whatever role you take when you're attending a meeting, be sure to carry out your task and your responsibility purpose, uh, purposefully and professionally. Okay, now there's actually three steps if you really want to get into a meeting process. Part of this, it's the meeting planning, it's the meeting delivery, and the meeting follow-up. Part of having a well-run meeting is to make sure that these three steps are followed. The items that are part of each step are going to vary depending on how large or how small the meeting is. So your meeting can be scalable. These are key points to make it effective. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is the meeting planning. And these are a list of some of the activities that are necessary for the planning of a meeting. We're going to go over most of them on separate slides. But you want to define the session objectives. You want to identify what's, uh, what are the required deliverables. Determine what a... Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. 
My name is Michael Malutis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.